Hello folks, Spray Benz is here today with the topic of changing valve guide se seals on here the V8 uh, and gas engine works the same for the gas, the six cylinder gas engines as well. Valve guide seals can lead to excessive oil consumption. This one right here almost uh, consumes like two quarts to about a thousand miles. That's that's a bit much. Uh, falls up the uh, spark plugs and it's just not, besides of getting expensive, it's also just not great on the engine and the uh, catalytic converter. So here I'll be covering the special tools you need and uh, the procedure. All right, so here a couple of parts you'll need. You'll need the new valve guide seals. Here a package of two of these. Then you have, you should be most likely getting new spark plugs because the old ones I'm sure are gonna be fouled up here. They're the, uh, the ones that were, in there were incorrect anyway. Uh, you need a 10 millimeter box wrench, 10 millimeter socket, spark plug, spark plug wrench here is a 27 millimeter with a short extension for turning the crankshaft. You need um, a 19 millimeter for the tool that I'm gonna show you in a moment. Trust the pliers to take the spark plug boots off, but this is also for getting the old valve guide seals off. Good magnets, here's a big one, a pencil one. You have to have those. Uh, needle nose pliers because you need to fish the the smaller keepers out of the center of the valve guide seat here is a pipe extension is when you put the new valve guide seats and you put these protectors in first so you don't push the valve new valve seal over the sharp edges of the valve, top of the valve shaft and then you use this this piece of tubing or pipe to completely push this seal in back on its seat uh, so far for that and then you also have to have Two other special tools without which this is going to be almost a non-starter. Uh, right here I have a, um, this is a leakage tester where I plug the leakage port and has a regulator on it. So I can put air pressure onto the cylinder that I'm gonna be working on. And you need this special tool here is not the most ideal one. The one that Benz uses, I couldn't find anymore, so I made this one work. You need to fiddle around with it so it actually works great. But before you can even get there, I'm gonna show you how to get the, the camshaft in the right position. But those are really the, the special tools you have to have, which means you have to have compressed air and some sort of an adapter that lets you connect uh, right there to the cylinder you're, you're gonna be working on. But before you can get there, you need to obviously take off the, uh, the uh, air filter housing completely. Mark your spark plug so you don't um, <laughs> we connected in the wrong spot. Loosen up the gooseneck for the transmission because this valve cover barely makes it out of here without you disturbing an awful lot. And uh, what else? Yeah, once you have loosened these couple of bolts, you can take this valve cover off. This is uh, the one that I worked on first. Next thing is you need to get the crankshaft in the right position, like here these the the lobes are pointing away from the camshaft 
lifters. Right here, the, this one is still removed. Um, and here I'll show you what happens when you press down on this. And I have better luck removing this thing from the front. There you go. lifter now you have access to the the actual valves more of that in just a second but like i said you need to get the before you can <coughs> excuse me <coughs> get the the valve lifter off you need to have this cylinder in the top dead position in the top dead center position uh, in order to do that, you need to turn the crankshaft. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There you go. <coughs> and in order to, to get there, that's why you need the 10 millimeter box wrench because you loosen up the fan bolts and you carefully take the fan out there's another video on my channel about that and then you turn you get onto the crankshaft bolt up here somewhere in here there you go <coughs> up to the point when you can see that over on the my uh the cylinder i'm working on that the lobes are kind of like pointing both up <coughs> and then i'm going to take the camera with me here see if i can get the <coughs> the flashlight ah there it is there are markers on there there we go there's an arrow and there's the marker. There we go. So this one here is pointing, I believe at 90. <coughs> so each one of them, then they are in increment 0, 90, and so forth, where the cylinder is in top head center that you're gonna work on. <coughs> and the whole point is that you have to have the, the maximum of like the the um these things can't be closed like opening here like this one is they need to be completely closed on both sides only then can i finally start getting these the uh, lifters off and work on them so here i'm gonna go over the to job using this uh, side view this cut view of the valve stem the whole camshaft rocker arm exam assembly in essence what we're trying to do is putting pressure on our combustion chamber to keep this valve closed here i hope you can see the cursor uh, the valve seal is up here that's the part that we need to remove for that, the, um, the camshaft needs to be positioned that the lobes are far away from the rocker arm, because otherwise we can't get this uh, out of there. And this is where I earlier described earlier how to get the uh, camshaft into position where that particular cylinder is in the top dead center uh, position, meaning the piston is all the way up. So once you have that, you put the... Uh, push down device under the camshaft and you're pushing down on to the top of the valve pushing this down enough so you can remove this rocker arm out this way towards the eight here then you remove this round little disc with a slot you see that the slot goes this way 
and that's how it needs to come back out. Once you have that out, then you can finally put pressure on your system to keep this valve closed. Push down on this big round uh, retainer, if you will, and that will push the spring, compress the springs, and you will have access to these little keepers here. Uh, and I think they are they're called here valve cone half. So those are the, the small little keepers that I've been talking about. Once you have them out, you release the, the, the tension off of your uh, removal the jig and the springs come out and then you can gain access to the seal. You take the pliers in the video that I showed you, you t or you pry underneath from underneath with a screwdriver, you pry that off. They are they're not on very very tight so they come off fairly easy don't damage the valve shaft and then you're going to put the uh, valve guide uh, saver on so you can push the new seal on make sure that you bottom out down here on that valve guide and then you put the springs back in make sure that the springs come get, go back the same way how they had come out put your uh, big round disc in try to get the keepers back in place I use I use pliers if you have, whatever method is is gonna work for you go ahead and take it and use it and then you uh, release the pressure and correctly correctly assemble it you know that you correctly assemble this part when the top of the valve stem peeks out out of this assembly here just the hair it's it's probably half a millimeter uh, not even a sixteenth of an inch that it protrudes put the the big round disc on it and then you can finally assemble the rocker arm or put it back in place by compressing the valve spring by that time you need to relieve the pressure here so you can do that yeah and then you have successfully changed one. One thing to look out for is the, the camshafts. If they have a couple of running marks, it's usually okay. It's usually the, the rocker arms here that show somewhere, sometimes more, sometimes not. Um, a little bit of, of running marks are okay, but with, if there are deep grooves in it, you really ought to think about replacing the rocker arms and you might even have to replace the camshaft, which is a whole different subject. But uh, that in all is it. And uh, now back to the video. The trick is to get these little keepers out with the little magnet. And you need to kind of sort of fish out from either here or there however you can while you compress this all the way down you have to have pressure on the cylinder otherwise your valve is going to disappear and then you're going back either use a magnet or I use these um, the nose pliers and try to finagle them in there and once you've compressed the spring all the way you get one started, next one in, release, and then you put the small little um, distance piece back in the way and how it come, came out. And then you put the, uh, the, uh, the, the cam rocker back in under. And again, I've come from the from the fuel injection side with that one. It takes a little bit of niggling, but overall, it uh, <laughs> it works. But it is slow going. Also, you might have noticed that I I plugged the drain hole in the back. I tried to cover as much as possible off the engine, so none of these keepers can can fall by the wayside. Because that'd be bad. All right. One thing also, in 
before you start working on the um, valve guide seals, the uh, passenger side cylinder bank is a lot easier to get to. There's not an awful lot in the way other than the gooseneck from the automatic transmission dipstick. That one needs loosened. Uh, other than that, there's not too much that you need to take off of the valve cover. Uh, very straightforward stuff here. A couple of additional tips with regards to the uh, driver side one. That one is a little bit more involved and can be brought with some issues with some of the uh, fittings, hoses not coming off. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. So here's what I'm talking about. Uh, this hose is fairly easy to get to, no biggie. And then it starts to be become a little bit more complicated because you need to loosen this, you need to loosen this fitting. In this case, this one did not want to come off easily. Uh, same thing with this one. Make sure that you have a rag, uh, like some th sort of a container standing by because this thing is uh, under fuel pressure, which means it's gonna leak out. So don't let that leak but you need to have this set of hoses come off because otherwise you can't get this one out of there and the other uh, challenge is the brake booster hose the vacuum hose that you need to loosen uh, right there you uh, flip this one up so you can get easier to this fitting counter hold otherwise you risk bending or breaking that fitting this needs to come all the way up so you can lift this valve cover off of this cylinder bank. Once you're in there, you still need uh, fairly skinny fingers in order to get to the valve lift, to take the valve lifters out. But once you're there, uh, it's the same procedure on the, as on the other side. And it happened to me again. What I mean by that is, in the video following all of this, you will find a new set of spark plugs and I didn't pay attention and I got once again an R version, meaning one with resistor. After some research, I finally found the right ones. They're coming in from Belgium. I will share the information about where I got them from below in the video description. So please forgive me when I show some spark plugs, they're still not the right ones. It gets uh, very difficult to get new uh, regular spark plugs for these old uh, engines. Sorry, folks.